As I mentioned earlier, one of the big features of Brahms is publishing taxonomic revisions, checklists, floras, directly out of the database. If you think about using a word processor to write up uh, a species description, you have all of your, your basic information coming from the synonymy, the type citation, and then a full description with measurements, distribution, and then your specimens determined. So it's very difficult to just type all that up and then try to automatically parse it into data fields. So if you start by putting it in data fields, it makes it much more uh, easy. And especially something like this, this is a specimen cited for a species description. To actually just type this out by hand is um, very complicated and tedious. And if you have this information in a data set, it'd be so much easier to automatically have it exported and formatted as you need for a publication. And this is what Brahms does. So you can take your species database, format it for a publication uh, to publish in something like PhytoKeys or PhytoTaxa. Uh, you can have a, your own website specifically for your project that is constantly being updated as you update the database. And then you can do other things with information because it's already been database for mapping and things like that. Other things too, you may, if you're not doing just a formal flora or monograph, you may just be wanting to produce checklists with common names, um, distributions, and something like that. So it's maybe not as complicated, but Brahms is set up to do any sort of, sort of re reporting of your information. And this, all this information, it can be put directly online. And there's a tool that comes with Brahms called Brahms Online. It's a unique web service made specifically for Brahms. And if you've developed a Brahms database, you can create a website. There are many advantages to putting your data online. You can actually, if you're publishing in, in, a, you know, in a hard copy paper, you're limited to the amount of information you can put. Uh, maybe one image as an example, but if you have maybe 20 images that are really great. You can actually put the one in your hard copy publication, but then put all 20 of them on your website. You can get feedback on your, your data as you put it online. And a lot of work done for doctoral theses are actually hidden. They're never fully published. And after all that work has been put into writing a dissertation, it'd be really nice to actually um, put all that in online so students can use Brahms to track everything that they've, all the specimens they've looked at, all the species descriptions they've written as they're doing their work, and then at the end publish their thesis and a whole website with all of the information that they may have collected. And it's, a, it's good publicity for your institution, for your project, for your taxon, for anything else that you are um, working on. Now, it's as simple as uh, using Brahms Web Connect as a software tool that uses, um, allows you to publish it. So you basically find the Publish Online menu, select the records you want to put online, and upload it to um, the Brahms Online server. This server is uh, stored elsewhere, so you're actually putting a copy of your data uh, somewhere else, but if you worked with Dennis Filer, if you wanted to do uh, an instance of a, on a server at your own institution, you can talk to him and that's available as well. Um, but they are uh, currently hosting data sets uh, and that can then just be re-updated as you need to. So an example, um, as I mentioned earlier, it, you can publish your monographs online, you can use HTML templates and include any of these fields that you've uploaded. And it gives you a lot more flexibility, as I mentioned, than a hard copy flora. You have a lot of options for how you can view images online, um, for zooming into um, larger images, and just viewing all of the um, types of information you may have for the images. You can put all the maps you have for geocoordinates information on your website. And you can add KML layers to your project or remove them and give your users more options. There are many examples, many, many examples of projects online in Brahms. For specimen databases, we have the University of Puerto Rico at Mayaguez, um, University of uh, Brasilia is online. For floras, we have Plants of Gabon, um, Conifers of the World. I think there's a 
floor of Namibia as well. And then something sort of unexpected, uh, the uh, website on botanical illustrations. Now, uh, illustrations are just another specimen type or record type or a literature citation that you know, can be indexed uh, with a scientific name and a publication. Here's an example. Now, Brahms isn't a s simple database. It has a lot of features and a lot of tools, which means it takes um, a little bit of work to learn how to use Brahms. But there is extensive documentation online, not only to how to install Brahms, how to um, do your basic data entry, uh, how to create a user account, those sorts of things. But anything specialized that users have done for entering data from images, there's an extensive guide for that. Uh, how do you enter living collections data? How do you do online loans, reporting? There's a whole section on Brahms online setup. Uh, and then there's example data files that you can even upload into a Brahms instance while you're just testing it out and seeing if it's something you might want to use. So there's actually a lot of help out there. Uh, it might take a little bit of time, but it's it's actually not hard to use. I downloaded it and it's had it installed and up and running within five minutes. And then they actually do a lot of in-person training courses. These are often uh, around major botanical congresses. You can write to Dennis and see if anyone from his team will be at a uh, congress. There's a big Brahms advisory group of users. And so you can actually learn from your other colleagues and they help with training sessions for how to use Brahms. Uh, alternatively, you can, re you can request and fund your own course. You can actually pay for Dennis to come to your institution if you had a big group. I think Sanby in October had him come down and train uh, the whole Sanby staff to use Brahms. And uh, a good feature about this is it's constantly being developed and it is, has strong funding right now. They are developing Brahms 8 at this moment. It's supposed to be released, I think, um, around April, and this is now being developed in collaboration with the Royal Botanic Gardens Q and with um, Naturalis in the Netherlands. And so if you have any questions, uh, Kim and I can field some uh, basic questions about Brahms, but also you can contact Dennis directly. And that's it. Any questions now?